Okay, what we're going to do here is just a quick application of the second derivative test to see how it works. Um, how does the second derivative test work? It says you're supposed to find a place where the derivative is equal to zero, and then at that point, um, try to plug that point into the second derivative. Now, we're looking at this function, f of x equals e to the minus x squared over two. Um, outside of linear functions, this is, is the second most uh, important function in all of science. It, it is basically the bell curve. Um, gets used everywhere. Um, meanwhile, I take a derivative. I see e to the blob. The derivative of e to the blob is e to the blob times the derivative of the blob. The derivative of minus x squared over two is just minus x. Uh, I need a second derivative, so I'm gonna take it ahead of time. Um, I have to use the product rule and simplify a little bit, but what I'm going to get after I simplify is x minus one times x plus one times e to the minus x squared over two. Now what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to find the critical points first. So I'm supposed to look for critical points here this is always defined, and I should probably get in the habit of saying it's always defined. Um, so let's just say always defined is AD, and you can use that as well. When I set this equal to zero, um, when I set x equal to zero, uh, let's put a little when here. When, when, can we see that? Yes, we can. When x equals zero, um, when I try to set e to the blob equal to zero, remember e to the blob is never zero, so we only have one critical point. Right, so I'm going to come down here. Um, the critical point is going to be zero, and when I plug in zero, I get one. And what am I supposed to do? By the second derivative test, let's just put second derivative test. Just says take that critical value, which is just zero, and put it into the second derivative. Well, the second derivative of zero here. It's just minus one times one times one. Well, that's just minus one. Now, what does the second derivative test say? Um, now, you don't have to write this down every time, but I, I usually get in the habit of doing it. When the second derivative is negative, right? You're looking at something that's concave down. If you're looking at something that's concave down where the derivative is zero, you have to be at the top. And the second derivative test then tells us um, the point zero one is a relative maximum. And then we'll write down, that down as a conclusion. So a little conclusion down here. Put little three little dots for ta-da, or whatever you want to stand for. Um, point zero 0.01 is a relative maximum. Relative max. Like that. Can we see that? Yeah, we can. All right, and that's as hard as it is to use the second derivative test. Um, but very often taking the second derivative sucks, or we can't do it, or the second derivative doesn't exist there. Um, so although we like the second derivative test, so often it just doesn't apply that we really should rely more on the first derivative test, which is just making sign charts for the first derivative. <laughs>